for the people uh, lining the streets of London and for some 500 million people all around the world, we have now had at least uh, an early glimpse of uh, Princess Anne as she rode with her father to uh, Westminster Abbey in the famous glass coach. The ceremonies, the pomp and circumstance continuing. Let's go back now to this report from London. Come in again, George. Well, Frank, this is very interesting indeed. This is the moment when the carriage bearing Princess Anne to Westminster Abbey is just passing through the central archway of the horse guards with its road leading to Whitehall. That arch may be used only by royalty and a very few senior statesmen. And now a flourish of trumpets inside Westminster Abbey. And that flourish is to greet the Queen and her procession arriving and taking their places inside the Abbey. now we're getting for the first time a look at the wedding dress which has been kept a carefully guarded secret um, I think uh, nuclear secrets of Britain have never been guarded more closely than this wedding dress this morning but it is a traditional wedding dress I think it's fair to say and the description we've been given by the designer says that it's um, emphasized with fine graduated pen tucks. The fabric is white pure silk. It has Elizabethan sleeves, I'm told. Finely pleated uh, white silk chiffon undersleeves. George, is that the groom? That is the groom and the best man, Captain Eric Grounds, fellow officer of his. She's also wearing a diamond tiara holding her veil in place and she has a short shoulder train there we have a look at the diamond tiara bouquet of 15 white roses also uh, in that bouquet will be a sprig of myrtle which was grown from a tree that provided myrtle for the wedding of Queen Victoria back in 1840 something oh, old beautiful Also, stems of orchids and lily of the valley and this uh, simple myrtle from Queen Victoria's wedding bouquet. She seems remarkably serene, not at all nervous. Of course, she's accustomed to great occasions, I guess. Edinburgh speaking to his only daughter, Princess Anne, as they approach the altar. Behind them, the only two attendants, young Prince uh, Edward, nine years old, and Lady Armstrong, Sarah Armstrong Jones, the daughter of Princess Margaret. Prince Edward wearing his kilts, 
Lady Sarah in a classic white dress for a young bride's attendant. the groom, Captain Mark Phillips on the left, looking around to catch a glimpse of his bride as she approaches the altar. Behind him, the best man, Captain Eric Grounds. to see the faces of the bride and groom during the ceremony. The queen has decided that it's uh, inappropriate to have cameras on their faces, so we will see them only from behind as they exchange their marriage vows. gathered here in the sight of God and in the face of this congregation to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is an honorable estate instituted of God himself, signifying unto us the mystical union that is betwixt Christ and his church, which holy estate Christ adorned and beautified with his presence and first miracle that he wrought in Cana of Galilee and is commended in her writ to be honorable among all men and therefore is not by any to be enterprised nor taken in hand unadvisedly, lightly or wantonly but reverently, discreetly, soberly and in the fear of God duly considering the causes for which matrimony was ordained. First, it was ordained for the increase of mankind according to the will of God, and that children might be brought up in the fear and nurture of the Lord and to the praise of his holy name. Secondly, it was ordained in order that the natural instincts and affections implanted by God should be hallowed and directed aright that those who are called of God to this holy estate should continue therein in pureness of living. Thirdly, it was ordained for the mutual society, help and comfort that the one ought to have of the other both in prosperity and adversity into which holy estate these two persons present come now to be joined. Therefore, if any man can show any just cause why they may not lawfully be joined together, let him now speak, or else hereafter forever hold his peace. After I, I require and charge you both, as you will answer, at the dreadful day of judgment, when the secrets of all hearts shall be disclosed, that if either of you know any impediment why ye may not be lawfully joined together in matrimony, ye do now confess it. For be ye well assured that so many as are coupled together otherwise than God's word doth allow are not joined together by God, neither is their matrimony lawful. Mark Antony Peter, wilt thou have this woman to thy wedded wife to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Wilt thou love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all other, keep thee only unto her as long as ye both shall live? I will. Anne Elizabeth Alice Louise, 
Wilt thou have this man to thy wedded husband to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Wilt thou obey him and serve him, love, honor, and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all other, keep the only unto him so long as ye both shall live? I will. Who give it this woman to be married to this man? I, Mark Antony Peter. I, Mark Antony Peter. Take thee, Anne Elizabeth Alice Louise. Take thee, Anne Elizabeth Alice Louise. To my wedded wife. To my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. According to God's holy ordinance. According to God's holy ordinance. And there too I plight thee my troth. And there too I plight thee my troth. I am Elizabeth Alice Louise. I am Elizabeth Alice Louise. Take thee, Mark Antony Peter. Take thee, Mark Antony Peter. To my wedded husband. To my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love, cherish, and to obey. To love, cherish, and to obey. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. According to God's holy ordinance. According to God's holy ordinance. And there too I give thee my troth. And there too I give thee my troth. In the name of thy Lord, we hallow and dedicate this ring, that by thy blessing, he who gives it and she who wears it, keeping true faith the one to the other, may abide together in thy peace, continue together in thy favor, live together in thy love, and may finally dwell together in thine eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Archbishop now gives the wedding ring with this to Captain ring Phillips. I be wed. With this ring, I be wed. With my body, I be worship. With my body, I be worship. And with all my worldly goods, I be endow. And with all my worldly goods, I be endow. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray. O eternal God, creator and preserver of all mankind, giver of all spiritual grace, the author of everlasting life, send thy blessing upon these thy servants, this man and this woman whom we bless in thy name, that living faithfully together, they may surely perform and keep the vow and covenant betwixt the maid, whereof this ring given and received is a token and pledge, and may ever remain in perfect love and peace together, and live according to thy laws, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Those whom God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. For as much as Mark Antony Peter and Anne Elizabeth Alice Louise have consented together in holy wedlock and have witnessed the same before God and this company and there too have given and pledged their truth either to other and have declared the same by giving and receiving of a ring and by joining of hands. I pronounce that they be man and wife together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 
As you can imagine, uh, an affair like this has uh, spurred the souvenir industry, but they're expected to reap about $15 million off this wedding, selling everything from T-shirts to uh, expensive Wedgwood cameos. Even the British Army has uh, done their part. Uh, they've issued two special stamps in honor of the wedding. Both of them have the same picture, Prince Philip standing a little bit behind Princess Anne, or sorry, Captain Phillips, Captain Mark Phillips. Uh, the date is on the stamp, uh, 14th of November, 1973. Uh, there's a three and a half pence stamp, which is violet, and there's a 20 pence stamp, which is this one, has a uh, light brown background. As you may recall, there was a bit of a flap over uh, the retouching of some of the photographs in here. Um, there was an instruction to remove a mole and uh, to lighten the eyes and to darken some of the hair. But uh, the stamps look very nice, I think, don't you? And I should imagine they're selling uh, very well indeed. Well, there is much still to happen uh, in Britain this morning. They have to have all the grand departures from Westminster Abbey, and we'll have more on that when our coverage of wedding at Westminster continues. procession now moving through the Abbey. The Duke of Edinburgh, her husband, uh, on her left, followed by her mother, the Queen Mother, the 73-year-old widow of King George VI. Behind her, the Prince of Wales, Prince Charles, who's 25 years old today and someday will probably succeed his mother as King, jo uh, King Charles. And now the bridegroom and the bride, the man and wife, into their carriage, back with the Queen Mother. For a moment, they seem to be waiting for a taxi, but I'm yes. relieved to see the carriage has appeared, and the procession is about to get underway. aren't they? They really are, yeah. Go ahead, Princess. Give him a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, Captain Phillips has uh, noticeably um, become um, a little more relaxed, uh, at ease now, and we've seen his famous flashing smile uh, several times. You can't blame him <laughs> for relaxing. They can sit back now in the glass carriage and look at the queen yes. smiling. <laughs> it's Prince Andrew just behind her, her second uh, eldest son, 13 years old. And uh, the queen looks as if uh, she is, uh, like all the rest of us, trying to catch a glimpse of this procession as it leaves Westminster Abbey on the way back to Buckingham Palace. Do you suppose anyone is taking home movies for them so they can see their wedding later? The Queen is an avid photographer. She takes pictures at every occasion, but she's kept her um, Instamatic or whatever in her <laughs> pocket today, I'm glad to say. I couldn't help thinking uh, when they were exchanging their vows, uh, Frank and Elizabeth, uh, for richer or poorer, uh, they're a lot richer now. Yes. Uh, after their marriage, uh, the princess's income uh, went from 37000 up to about $90,000 a year. And as Captain, 